Hi, here's Marc Dubois from Harrowtech. I recently wanted to use a Mario embedded controller from NI for a demonstration of the hardware in the loop application very stand. Running a model of the Mario was pretty obvious, but using its FPGA I.O. was not. I was surprised at find that no configuration file for the Mario was available online and very little information about it, even if there was a demand for it. The only solution was to create those configuration files myself. I found information about creating those files, but with very few details. After taking the online LiveView FPGA course and multiple trials and error, I finally was able to create the FPGA configuration and bit files to use in my Rio with very stand. I thought I would try to make life easier for anyone else attempting to do the same. So I am making this video in which I am demonstrating how to set up your system and your MyRio to use its FPGA I.O. with Veristan. First thing, you need to install the required applications and drivers on your host PC. You need to install LiveView, LiveView Real-Time, LiveView FPGA, the Compact Rio drivers, so that you get a list of modules from which you can create a configuration file that you will modify for the MyRio, and the LiveView MyRio toolkit. Then you can install Veristand. The version of Veristand must match the version of LiveView you install. Make sure to include LiveView support for Veristand when installing Veristand. Finally, a LiveView project template named Veristand FPGA based IOT interface tools. The links for the drivers are provided in the document linked in the comments of this video. You now need to install the correct drivers on your MyRio. Connect it to your host PC, then open NIMAX. Your MyRio should be located under Remote Systems. I would recommend that you first format your MyRio. To format it, right click and select Format Disk. Just follow the instructions. Once formatted, expand your Mario and select Software. Select Add Remote Software, or you can just right-click. You will be offered software stacks depending on the application that you have installed on your host PC. Notice you have the option here, Uninstall All Software. This is an alternative to formatting. I would format the Mario at least once at the beginning. Later on, if you want to change the software stack, you can use that option. I highly recommend that you use one of the software stack and do not attempt to use the custom software installation for now. Select the software stack responding to the version of LiveView and Veristand that you want to use. Notice that in my case, I wanted to use LiveView and Veristand 2017. I first installed the stack under LiveView Real-Time 17.0.0. This allowed me to run a LiveView models on the MyRio for Veristand, but I could not use the FPGA I.O. I had to install the stack under LiveView Real-Time 17.0.2 for the FPGA I.O. and the models to work. Once the stack is installed, go back to an IMAX and select Add Remove Software again. This time, select Custom Software Installation. Select NI Veristand Engine. Select the version that matches your LiveView and Veristand version. Don't try to pick and choose. Just keep the selection as selected by an IMAX. Complete the installation of the Veristand engine. Now you are ready to create the FPGA VI and its configuration file. Go to LiveView and select Create Project. Select the template NI Veristand FPGA Project. There is no setup available for my Rio, so select Compact Rio Reconfigurable Embedded System. In System Setup, select Create New System. Discovering an existing system is not a viable option for the MyRio. You have to select a controller, a chassis, and a module. So here I am selecting a 9022 controller, a 9101 chassis, and a 9381 module. I selected the 9381 because it contains analog and digital inputs and outputs, like in MyRio. I give a name to the project and location to save it. This is what the project looks like. Now I'm going to add a MyRio target. So you need to move the FPGA VI to the FPGA target of the MyRio. You also need to move the DMA write, the DMA read, and the FPGA configuration file. Now you can remove the Compact Rio target and save the project. 
Now I'm going to open the FPGA VI. In my case, I'm not interested by the PWM IOs. So I'm going to delete here those two loops that are for the uh, PWMs. So if you are interested by the PWM input or output, uh, you can simply replace the references of the IO with the ones of corresponding to the PWM on the MyRio. So now I'm going to fix all the broken wires. So I press Ctrl B and delete the variables, remove the output. So now the VI is not broken anymore. So one option I, I have is I can simply replace the references for the IO from those that are provided by default to the ones of the on the MyRio. So for example, here I can select connector C, digital output zero, a digital input zero, and so on. But this approach, because it's using a sub-VI here, this sub-VI is limited to four digital inputs. So I prefer to open the sub-VI and copy the code and then use FPGA IO nodes. This way I can add as many inputs or outputs I want and also I control better the sizes, packets and the number of packets. So for example, here I could select connector C, digital IO and so on. So I can do something like that. So at this point, I'm going to close this VI and I'm going to open the completed project. Data transferred between the FPGA IO and various 10 using two DMA 5 folds. One from the FPGA input to various 10 DMA read and the other one from various 10 to FPGA output DMA write as defined by the LiveView project template. Data is transferred through the DMA one packet at a time. For this template, the default packet data type is unsigned 64 bits or U64. The transfer data needs to be packed into a U64. Each U64 is not required to be fully filled. For FPGA inputs, the first packet is for timing. The following packets are for data. The second packet is for digital inputs. Only the first four bits are used. I selected the first four digital lines of connector C of the MyRio. The third packet is for analog inputs. The analog inputs of the MyRio have a resolution of 12 bits, but we'll use 16 bits for each input, so four analog inputs can be put into a single U64 packet. I selected the two analog inputs on connector A and the two analog inputs on connector C. If I wanted to add the two analog inputs on connector B, I would need to use an additional packet. Notice that when using a build array function, the lower indices correspond to the first bits of the packets. When using the join number functions, the low input correspond to the first bits of the packets. The packets are wired to a build array function that is in turn wired to a for loop containing a sub VI that sends one packet at a time using the DME read that was created for us by the project template. The packets are received into the FPGA using another sub VI this sub-VI reads one packet at a time, so the expected number of packets must be wired to the count terminal of the for loop. Notice that your final number of packets must be lower than the size limit of the DME 5 set from the item in the project. All packets for the outputs from the FPGA to various extent are for data. The first output packet is for digital outputs. Here, I use the four next digital lines of connector C, as outputs and I added the four LED lines. The second output packet is for analog outputs. The split number function is used here to break down the packet. The low part of the number corresponds to the first bits of the U64 packet. On the MyRio, the analog outputs have a range of 0 to 5 volts for connector A and minus to plus 10 volts for connector C. This is why the outputs on connector C are explicitly coerced to signed 16 bit. This VI can be compiled into a bit file for the FPGA board. The configuration file used by Veris10 to interpret the inputs and outputs must be modified to match the modified FPGA VI. The information on how the data is transferred back and forth between Veris10 and the FPGA IO within the VI is provided to various 10 by the FPGA configuration file. The FPGA configuration file uses an XML format. The first modification of the configuration file is to change the default name 
of the bit file by the name of the bit file that was compiled within the project. The second modification should be within categories. The categories are how the FPGA I.O. connections are being grouped within various stands. The first category is input. Subcategories are analog, digital, and PWM. Notice that the PWM subcategories was deleted here because the PWM I.O. was deleted from the FPGA VI. You can change those subcategories and description as desired. The modification will show up in various 10 when it is time to use the FPGA I.O. A category output after input with similar subcategories can be modified similarly. The following sections are for the data themselves. A first section is DMA read. This section describes how the data are packaged into the packets from the FPG inputs to various 10. The total number of packets per data set is given here. The number should be changed for the actual number of packets used in the FPGA VI. In the present case, the modified number of packets is 3. The first packet from the FPGA inputs to various 10 is for timing and should be left as is. The second packet is for digital inputs. The digital inputs can be unpacked per individual line using four subsections. A name, descriptions, and category must be given to each individual line. For digital lines, data can be unpacked per individual lines, as seen here, or per port eight lines at a time using a single unsigned 8-bit integer instead of individual booleans. Going from a configuration per digital line to a configuration per digital port only has an impact within various 10. Therefore, two configuration files can be created, one using digital ports and the other one using digital lines for the same FPGA bit file. The order in which the data is packed within a packet is defined within the FPGA VI. When using the build array or index array functions, the early indices refer to the first bits within a packet. When using the joint numbers or split number functions, the low part refers to the first bits within a packet. The order within the FPGA configuration must match the order of reading or writing within the FPGA VI. The final configuration of the third packet shown here. Each analog input is provided as a raw 16-bit integer, signed for connector C, plus or minus 10 volts, and unsigned for connector A, 0 to 5 volt. The following section is for the FPGA outputs. In the case of the outputs, there are only two packets. The configuration of the digital and analog output is similar to the one used for the inputs. After building the FPGA bit file and modifying the FPGA configuration file, both files should be copied into the FPGA directory of the public folder of your version of Aristan. Here is the location of that directory. Copy the FPGA configuration file that was modified for the MyRio. Then copy the FPGA bit file that was built from the FPGA VI associated with the FPGA configuration file. Both files should be in the public FPGA directory of Veristand. Now the configuration file is available to Veristand. Let's start Veristand. I am opening an empty project file. Then I am opening the System Definition Explorer. The controller must be configured for the MyRio. I am changing the name, selecting the operating system, and writing the default IP address when using the MyRio through USB. Now I can go to FPGA and let the wizard discover the hardware. The FPGA board is correctly detected. I am selecting the board and opening the configuration file. Veristand goes by default to its public FPGA folder. I am selecting the configuration file that was created for the MyRio. All the channels that were added to the configuration file are now available in the input and output categories. To appropriately test the analog channels, I need to set up scales. The analog I.O of the MyRio provides values in raw format. Let's set scales for the analog I.O. The scale of analog I.O. on the C connector is 20 volts over 4096, resulting in a factor of 0.00488 to convert to volts. Very stand takes care of the reverse factor. The scale of analog I.O. on the A connector is 5 volts over 4096, resulting in a conversion factor of 0.00122. Then I am applying the created scales to the appropriate channels. To test the MyRio with Veristand, 
I have wired the analog output 0 of connector A to the analog input 0 of connector C using black and white wires. I have also wired on connector C the digital IO0, an input, to digital IO4, an output, with a red wire. I am deploying the project to the MyRio. I am opening an empty user interface. Then I am placing AI0 on the panel. I am now placing a slider that I am associating with AO2. I am using a LED indicator for the IO0 and a checkbox for the IO4. After connecting this UI panel to the MyRio, I can see that the inputs hardwired to the outputs respond as expected. I hope that video helped. If you have any question or feedback, you can go to harotech.com or leave a comment in the comment section of this video.